Thank you, Rob. Um, so uh, what I hope to accomplish in the next 10 to 15 minutes is to discuss um, the design and results of the Gravitas trial, and also to provide some insight on how, given the results of Gravitas, we can adopt uh, platelet function testing in our clinical practice. So this slide has not been shown yet, just as to get everyone up to speed regarding how one measures platelet function um, with the Verify Now P2Y12 device and how it was used in Gravitas, is that this is a, a very straightforward point of care instrument, which contains uh, fibrinogen coated beads and an agonist, in this case, in the, in the P2Y12 assay, it contains ADP. And when blood, whole blood is drawn into the cartridge, if there is no inhibition, the platelet bead, beads do not aggregate, um, uh, excuse me, do not uh, do aggregate, and there's increased light transmittance. While the, if there is inhibition of platelet function by clopidogrel, ticagrelor, or prazogrel, there will be low light transmittance because there's a lack of platelet aggregation or agglutination. So uh, here is a case of a patient. This patient um, is, it was in his 70s or is in his uh, early 70s, had worsening angina, had a previous stent, but at the time was only on uh, uh, aspirin monotherapy. And you see he has a quite severe distal left main obstruction. His right coronary artery was all right. His syntax score was less than 32. So I opted to proceed with percutaneous coronary intervention using a culotte technique. I loaded the patient with 600 milligrams of clopidogrel and put an everolimus eluting stent in the left main to the left circs, circ, followed by the left main into the LAD and used by Valerudin as a monotherapy anticoagulant and had a very excellent result um, that was uh, checked with intravascular ultrasound. So this patient did great, went home. Um, b actually, before discharge, the team had ordered a Verify Now P2Y12 test, which was 239. The higher the PRU, the higher the level of on-treatment reactivity. We also do uh, CYP2C19 genotyping at our, at our center, although it takes four to five days for the result to come back. In this case, the patient was uh, heterozygous for the gain of function allele, star 17, despite the fact that he has an elevated uh, on-treatment reactivity. I was not involved in the care of discharge of this patient, but the patient was sent home on aspirin and clopidogrel 75 milligrams daily. So he returned six weeks later with uh, onset of chest discomfort at rest and elevated troponin. He had been compliant with his dual antiplatelet therapy, a well-insured patient who was quite intelligent who had been taking his medicine. And you see on angiography, there is a filling defect um, in the distal left main into the osteal circumflex. On the left, you can see the intravascular ultrasound. And here, right there, you see, as we do a manual pullback, you see a filling defect in the intravascular ultrasound with contrast actually going behind this echogenic uh, structure which, which we diagnosed as a subacute stent thrombosis right here. And you see as we inject contrast, you see this, this, this uh, echogenic structure moving right here. And there's contrast outlining it there. So I guess the question would be is, would changing this patient's antiplatelet therapy based on his reactivity after the initial procedure have improved his outcome? So we tried to answer that question in Gravitas, which uh, screened 5,429 patients in 83 centers in the United States and Canada with the Verify Now PTY12 test 12 to 24 hours after PCI in patients who had undergone an elective or urgent PCI with a drug-eluting stent about one out of 10 patients that were enrolled had an acute coronary syndrome, so this was a predominantly an elective population. We defined high on-treatment reactivity with a PRU of greater than 230 based on prior data and randomized those patients to either high dose clopidogrel, a double dose after an additional loading dose, or a standard dose, 75 milligrams a day. And that ended up being about 2,200 patients. We also randomly selected a cohort of patients to be followed who had low on-treatment reactivity and treated them in a blinded fashion with 75 milligrams a day. We followed these patients up at one in six months, 
The primary endpoint was cardiovascular death, non-fatal myocardial infarction, or stent thrombosis. We also did repeat platelet function testing over time at the 30-day and six-month visit. Here are the initial patient characteristics. As I noted, predominantly stable angina or low-risk unstable angina, angina that uh, encompassed about 84% of the enrolled uh, randomized patients. Here's the primary endpoint of Gravitas. No clinical benefit with double-dose clopidogrel in patients with high on-treatment reactivity after PCI with a hazard ratio of 1.01. If you look at the non-randomized comparison of patients with high reactivity versus those with lower reactivity who were treated with 75 milligrams a day, the event rates in patients with lower PRUs was numerically better, 1.4 versus 2.3%, but this did not reach statistical significance. I think the pharmacodynamic data is, is, is very uh, enlightening given the clinical outcomes. You see that there was a significant reduction in on-treatment reactivity with a double dose of clopidogrel compared to standard dose, but this, the absolute differences were quite modest. And you see there's a wide vari variability in on-treatment reactivity in those patients who received double dose clopidogrel, with some patients still having quite persistently high pl platelet reactivity. We did a post-hoc analysis of those patients who had just been treated with standard uh, clopidogrel. And if you look at the patients who had low entrepreneurial reactivity at baseline, you know, there's very few, if any, events in the patients with the lowest levels of entrepreneurial reactivity, suggesting that perhaps lower levels of entrepreneurial reactivity would be associated with a lower risk of cardiovascular events. So is Gravitas a failure of platelet function testing or a failure of the drug that was used? It's important to, to remember that Gravitas did not test the utility of platelet function testing in patients undergoing PCI because a randomized cohort all had high on-treatment re reactivity. And this was not a guided strategy. We checked it once and gave the drug and see how the patients did. So we, we tested a specific strategy to identify and treat these non-responders based on a single test. And this strategy provided statistically significant but only modest reductions in platelet reactivity. Now this, um, we, we presented our preliminary results of a, of a new pharmacodynamic analysis at ACC. I'll be presenting the full uh, results this afternoon at 4.30 in the Ankara room um, over in, in, in the zone F. Suffice it to say that patient, if you look at platelet function as a time-varying covariate over the course of gra the Gravitas trial, patients who had a PRU of less than 208 either at baseline or during follow-up had a significantly lower risk of cardiovascular events at 60 days and at six months, even after correction for other significant covariates of outcome. Although at six months, this relationship was somewhat attenuated, but still the hazard, the patients who had peer use of less than 208 appeared to have approximately half the events or half the risk of events than patients greater than 208. And there's been some debate about genotyping versus phenotyping, that is platelet function testing. So we did a genetic sub-study of Gravitas called GIF that we presented at ACC. And this shows the change in platelet function over time in Gravitas, based both or stratified by the dose of drug given and the CYP2C19 genotype. And you see, first of all, there is a relationship that, that is, patients who are carriers for a CYP2C19 allele who had high reactivity at baseline tended to have less of an incremental response to high dose therapy. But interestingly, the risk of persistently high on treatment reactivity, even in the patients who were wild type for CYP2C19, was quite high. So that led to a very low attributable risk for persistently high reactivity in patients who were carriers of the CYP2C19 allele. So my hypothesis going in was that you'd be more likely, or it would be a, a good test to use in non-responders to choose whether to give double-dose clopidogrel or maybe a drug like prazogrel. But actually, the attributable risk is low that it's probably worthwhile to use just a, a, a more potent antiplatelet agent for all patients rather than checking a genotype.
So in a practical sense, what are we doing now at Scripps Clinic with the results of Gravitas? Well, I think STEMI and primary PCI, Prazagrel are now that it's uh, 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 approved in, in the United States, Ticagrelor are reasonable first options um, in patients who are naive to clopidogrel if there are no contraindications. Though those patients who are at higher risk of bleeding, uh, who are older, renal failure, and so forth, I mean, clopidogrel is a reasonable option, and then you check your PRU four to six hours later or the next morning. In the setting of non ST elevation ACS, the patient is clopidogrel naive and is going very quickly to the cath lab. Prazogrel and now Ticagrelor are reasonable options. Otherwise, you know, if the patient is going to be in, in the hospital for some time, I, I will pre treat with clopidogrel and then check a PRU on the cath lab table, which only takes about 10 minutes to get the result back. If there's a concern for bleeding on Prazogrel or even Ticagrelor, which is associated, as you saw, with higher rates of non uh, cabbage bleeding, I'll treat with clopidogrel and then check a PRU either on the table or in the morning, and then if the PRU is low, less than 200, 208, patients will have a very good outcome on clopidogrel, and I'll, I'll keep th that medicine. If higher, I'll switch to prazogrel or ticagrelor. Now, elective PCI uh, is not addressed in the guidelines, but we see from the, the pharmacodynamic analysis of Gravitas that patients with low PRUs, even in the elective setting, have a lower hazard for cardiovascular events. Uh, compared to higher levels of PRU. So here, especially if it's a complex case, I will switch to Prazogrel, or nowadays I could switch to Ticagrelor. So here's another patient. This is a 63-year-old male who had progressively worsening chest discomfort and elevated troponin who um, came to the cath lab pre-treated on clopidogrel. He had a, um, uh, a, a seromous eluding stent with instant restenosis in this bifurcation. He had been treated actually pr prior by a simultaneous kissing stent. I drew a verified out P2Y12 assay from the sheath. I started working on, on the lesion. Here I treated with a, a, a single everolimus eluding stent using a provisional bifurcation, a provisional approach. Finished with a kissing balloon, had an excellent angiographic result. The PRU, during the procedure, I got a PRU back. It was 163. This patient has excellent outcomes on clopidogrel, 75 milligrams daily. I sent him home on a, a baby aspirin. Uh, we call it a baby aspirin in, in the United States. And clopidogrel, 75 milligrams. And here, platelet function testing allowed me to, to guide my decision to choose between two different class one agents according to the ACC AHA guidelines, clopidogrel or prazogrel. The US uh, American guidelines do not specify a preference for one agent over the other. It's left to the operator's decision. I think here, this patient is going to do great on clopidogrel based on platelet function testing. And now in the United States next year, clopidogrel will lose its patent protection and will be cheaper as well. So in summary then, in terms of pharmacodynamic assessment and individualized therapy, there's a large amount of prospective data that platelet reactivity is associated with outcomes after PCI. This was shown both um, in earlier uh, presentations and also now from the Gravitas uh, pharmacodynamic analysis. Gravitas showed no benefit with a uniform strategy of double-dose clopidogrel in mostly elective patients with a PRU greater than 230. However, there is a marginal pharmacodynamic effect with this interve intervention. One could argue that given the low event rates overall in Gravitas, you need a large randomized clinical trial to prove efficacy of individualized therapy in this population, as large as Plato or Triton. So I think if you're waiting for randomized trial data to help you decide whether you should intensify antiplatelet therapy in lower risk patients, or for that matter, even ACS patients, it's going to be some time, if ever, we'll have a large randomized trial that will show this. Lower levels of PRU do appear to be associated with excellent outcomes, even in a mostly elective population from the Gravitas trial. Stay tuned, I encourage you to come at 4.30 this afternoon to look at that, those results. And I think that platelet function testing in ACS seems reasonable to help choose the most appropriate class one P2Y12 antagonist. Again, there's no preference between agents in the ACC AHA guidelines. Um, and this, um, in, in the setting of ACS, with the higher event rates, there'll be likely more net clinical benefit overall, and there will be cost savings. And on that, I'd like to thank you very much for the invitation.